Hello everybody, I hope you're all having a wonderful day and today we'll be jumping right into it. This is my top 5 central jungle picks for a solo queue carry. I'm going to give you a comprehensive list of the 5 best Pokemon to play when you need to carry a game and your team looks a bit suspicious. I'm also going to show you some jungle patterns and some ideas behind why you should play these characters and how they operate in the game. So I think there's going to be a lot of value in this video, so you're going to want to stay for that. Okay, and without further ado, let's start with number five. Who is the best number fifth, the fifth best character in the game to play in the jungle? And for me, it's going to be the Mimikyu. So we're going to drop Mimikyu here. Now, funnily enough, I had Mimikyu high up on my tier list the previous season, but uh, Mimikyu had a really strong resurgence with the buffs to play rough. Something that people don't understand is that Shadow Claw was also buffed and was not nerfed in this period. So play rough was inevitably nerfed. You have the clips of Mimikyu going invincible for several seconds. This is extremely overpowered, extremely overwhelming, but all right, let's just forget all that and let's just start at a base set of zero. So what does Mimikyu do? Mimikyu is a speedster in the sense that it just roams the map, stuns you, kills you and resets. It's a quick, it's like a, a tanky Gengar and it has a Slowbro Unite move, which is amazing potential and amazing utility in jewels, 1v1s, pick up threats and uh, even survivability. So Mimikyu has a lot. It has good wave clear. We're using its Shadow Sneak to clear them out quickly and efficiently. It has good damage in Shadow Claw, which does percentage health damage on the final strike. And it's a quick ability. It's up often. It has invincibility and play rough. And Trick Room, I don't think it's just too usable, sadly. And its Unite move is, is quite extraordinary as well. It's a level 5 jungler, so it does come out of the lane to the level 5 with the Shadow Claw or the play rough. It's okay. Level 7 is the true spike. So let's go and investigate a little bit about how you actually clear his Mimikyu. So actually on this little map, I don't have Mimikyu, so, which is very disappointing. So we'll just put a zoom roll for now. So let's just start our zoom roll here and let's just imagine, okay? So what's gonna happen more often than not is this is how you're gonna wanna clear. You do your Zatu, right? And from the Zatu, you're gonna go to blue buff. You take the blue buff, you're gonna go down here. You're gonna go to do this camp. You're gonna leash it, pull it over to here. Do this camp here and then there, and then you're gonna gank the lane. You should reach here at 905, at the very minimum. Like this is even if you're a terrible jungler and you don't know how to clear and you miss some camps. 905, that's your top lane gank. I want you guys to be cerebral junglers and central players. Do not think so statically. You have an option. There is a speed berry here, speed berry here, and you reach this lane at 855 if you need to. The berries spawn at nine minutes. So there's an 855 gank in the bottom, there's a 9 of 5 gank in the top. I want you all to think about what is the best lane to gank. Now, I want you to think about this in the sense that <clears throat> the first game, lane gank is so important. Being able to defeat the opponents and score, especially if you're an attack weight character like this Pokemon, you're going to really get a lot of value in the game and actually get ahead. So when you're looking at this in terms of high value, high intensity play, I want you to think, okay, who's a killable lane? Characters with low mobility and characters that haven't been set up for the gank. So if the enemy is, let's just say like, you know, like, uh, let's put Tyranitar, right? And he's playing up on here and you come in and gank here at the 855, you're probably gonna take down poor Tyranitar. This is gonna be highly beneficial because you're gonna be able to go and push, take a score, run away. You can even look at a jungle invade after. This is all amazing plays that can create insane value for yourself. So that's just something to consider. If the opponents are playing on the pad, so let's just erase all this. And if they're playing, and we'll put like an Umbri on here. We get rid of you, Tarantar. And this is our, our Mimikyu clone. That's Zoom roll for now. And let's just say this Umbri on the pad, you're actually going to get very little value. And unless you can get a good Shadow Claw on the pad, you can end up actually dying. And that's the worst thing you can do as a jungler. So that's a jungler no-no. A little bit of value here. I'm sprinkling it in. But... Never die on their pad. If you're dying on their pad as a jungler, you need to reassess what you did and why you did it because it is the wrong play and ending up in that result is not a misplay or a miscalculation. It's a very bad play that feeds the opposition and oh, it's a game ruining play. So stop doing that. So you have a 905 clear at the very latest and then you have a good gank into either lanes, especially if they're overextended. You do not have this amazing closeout potential, but there's a few mechanics you can abuse. But Number five is Mimikyu. I find Mimikyu a very strong character. I think you guys will enjoy it as well. I want you to think about 
This actual character in the terms of rotations and fast clear, Shadow Claw uh, and Shadow Sneak are very good for clearing and moving around the map. So use that when you play Mimikyu next. So our number five is Mimikyu. Number four in the hard carry tier, I'm actually gonna put Miascarada here. I've been enjoying the Rengar build a lot of Miascarada and I'm gonna explain a bit about that, what that is in a second. But Miascarada, recent release, it's just been buffed by Timmy. And a lot of people were like, oh, it was really good. And then this, these buffs push it up the top. What a lot of people are not seeing is the value in Trailblaze and Night Slash. This is, I believe, the superior moveset. I'm going to explain that in just a moment. But more about what Miascarada does. Miascarada is another assassin. It's a speedster with a high jumping ability. Your level 5 gank is, is zero impact. Yeah, really terrible, honestly. But you scale at level 6 and level 7. When you hit level 7, you're possibly the strongest level seven jungler in the game. The attack speed from Trailblaze and Aeos, the, uh, Aeos, Night Slash's actual ability to give you healing and crits is tremendous. We're talking about pickoffs, jumping everywhere. If they do not have Clefable and high countering mobility characters, it's very difficult to play against this Miascarada. Miascarada terrorizes the map in its actual ability to clear. It, it's so efficient and it's such a scary character because when Miascarada gets ahead, its ultimate can be on the lower impact side if not placed correctly, but actually like being able to auto attack or walk and, and have this invincibility passive, which is such high value, it makes it such a terrifying character in the game. So we're gonna go look a little bit about the Miascarada clear. So Miascarada, we're gonna use the sim rolls another example. Um, Miascarada has an excellent clear speed. We're talking about you should be in the lane by 9.15 at the latest. So you have the little dash, you take the dash, you jump over the wall, and then now you have a choice. If you want to gank the bottom lane, you're gonna go start here, then go to here, 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 okay, you see? And then we should end up in the bottom path. Now, it works the same way. So I like to call this, it's like a C. So I go like this, C, okay? I hope you guys know. And the other one is, like this, uh, also another C, <laughs> reverse C. I don't know how you guys draw your Cs. I, I generally draw them from the top down like that. So that's a regular C and then the reverse C is the blue start. Um, if you're getting invaded, so Miascarada, it has a decent enough clear. You should never get invaded on it. So it's not too bad, but yeah, you should be in one of these lanes at 915. You can kill someone once again if you're, they're close to the pad. If they're not close to the pad, if they're not close to the pad in these situations, I would highly recommend to wait in bushes, camp it out, see what happens, let the play develop, because if you go and overextend this Miascarada, you're gonna pop your passive, which is the most valuable tool for these bees. I'm gonna explain a little bit about how to play these A50 bees, because when you get to here, and these bees spawn, this is possibly the most important part of the game for Miascarada, because getting out of here alive and with the bees is gonna put you to level six. And as I said, level six is our huge spike. We're like, you know, this is double green tick. Once we get the first ability, which is the, the slash, night slash comes first, is you're going to get immense value in the game. I don't think, I think I love trial flower trick as a move from Miascarada, but I think Miascarada greatly benefits from the great increased attack speed and just the critical strike chance you get from using night slash. I would love if we could buffer that move a bit more. But yes, getting level six is like a key gateway to actually getting involved in the game. You also evolve and there's no more gatedness in the levels. So. Try to think of that. You don't want to lose your passive before this because you're going to go on the bees, you're going to jump on them, and you're going to try to get whatever you can of leafage. It's going to proc your passive because it's going to throw every spell in the game on you. You might die. Bit risky. Don't do it if you think you're just going to straight up die of nothing. But if you're going to get something for it, you know, it's maybe worth it. Consider that play. I think Miascarada, amazing potential. We're going to talk a little bit more about its ganking pattern. So once you hit level seven, you can go across all these walls. Like, you, pretty much any bush in the game, you're a menace. Like, it's it's almost impossible to play out of the, like, the, these bush ranges, guys, are, like, actually insane. If you've played this game with Miascarada, you can go to everywhere. Like, you completely control the jungle. And more importantly, if you're playing, like, a side lane pusher, so, like, you're running into the other lane, clearing the, the Odinos here, and, you know, playing around in this area, you pretty much, they can never go solo. What I want you to do is if you're gonna apply this sort of split push strategy, I want you to check who is there and how many. So if you want to go and pick off someone, they're gonna come, let's just say like, like look, it's uh, we'll put a Lapras, right? So Lapras is running around, -do 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 -do. he runs the lane, runs around here, and then you see him for three seconds he's alone, he has no buddies. Jump him, 
is it, jump jutsu kaisen in this town and we jump in with the trailblaze we're on top of him he's a little bit paralyzed we throw aos claw it's night claw it's night slash and, and he's stunned and <laughs> A few kitty scratches later and this guy's actually dead. And it's actually so powerful, this sense. And now, when they come to collapse you, you just jump away. And you have the biggest jump in the game. As I said, it's at this length from the bush, which is actually insane. You can clip the walls, so you can jump from here to here, but you can also jump from here to here. So I want you to think about that. It's very cerebral. Use the ability, as I said, like this idea of Rengar. Rengar is a character from League of Legends. It jumps out of bushes and it hits you and it continuously has this very toxic gameplay mechanic where he's invisible or you can't see him and then he just one-shots you. That's how you should play Miascarada. Get your one-shot. Don't continue fighting unless you have to. Get your one-shot, get your reset. Reposition, re wait a second, you know, let these people really fear the Miascarada. And when you reappear, you have this insane threat value where they've already used their spells and abilities. You don't go on first in this fight, but as I said, super syllable character, super hyper carry, attack weight, attacker, it's Miascarada. So for rank four, now that we got Miascarada out of the way, I'm gonna go talk about the special attacker here and it's Glaceon. I think Glaceon is in a prime spot to be one of the better junglers in the game right now. With Icicle Spear, having such a high impact against these bulky, cleffable teams. And honestly, like it's a general survivability and early game impact. This is just the character that excels in the general environment. And I wanted to go and say something small about this, but if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a subscription, uh, give me a like, leave a comment on what you're thinking so far, what can I change in the video? I really appreciate that. All right, back to the topic. I do actually have a small tier up above, and I'm gonna talk a bit about this. These characters are obviously broken, and if played in the jungle, they're gonna be good anyway. But they are all EX licenses, and they're likely to be banned from season 18 onwards, so I'm not gonna to talk too much about them. But basically, Zashin's best, probably the best Pokemon in the game, and the Mewtwo X and Y, look, like, they're pretty much autoplay once you get Mega Gage, so it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Might talk a little bit about them in the future, but not today. And yeah, so Glaceon, Amazing, you level four evolve, it's super fast in the game. Icicle Spear is such a threat and menace to these healing comps and bulky comps. It's hard to dive, it's very annoying. Auto aim ability, AOE, the, these Icicle Spears are area of effect. I love Icy Wind, but I just don't think it's as strong as Icicle Spears right now. So let's jump in here. Let's refresh our zoom rule and how do we want to clear? So this is one of the cheeky characters. You can do a level four gank. And how does a level four gank work, Sulu? So you're gonna wait to delay this till I think it's nine, you can wait till 30 or 35. So you can do a 35 and then you can gank a lane. I would always get blue first, unless you're specifically trying some top lane red cheese, but blue generally, because these, these la this lane, bot lane, when they overextend, I don't know if you guys noticed, but this is actually a shorter lane, the top lane. Like this is slightly longer. Like it's, it, it's, it's so weird, right? Like if you actually measure the point to point, um, you're going to catch a lot of players in the bottom lane. People are going to go for some silly scores and stuff. They usually do some dumb scores as well in top lane. So as I said, if this is something that interests you, this early gank, it's highly effective. You're going to get ahead in solo queue. You're going to get your team ahead. More often than not, it's going to lead to like a, a, like a pretty comparable advantage in the game. And it's quite strong. So this is something I want you to think about. Outer, outer, outside of that, I'm mean, going to just do a C clear, opposite reverse C or U, <laughs> I guess, whatever. But yeah, if you do a U clear, it's quite strong. You're gonna have a good value in the game as well. You're gonna come into level five in the lane. Just go get the bees, continue to farm. This is a tempo character. You just wanna run in and out of combat. You're throwing Icicle Spears, you're farming. Once you hit level 15 in Rayquaza, you're pretty much the most annoying character in the game. Build your stacks to Rayquaza, throw your Icicle Spears, absolute menace. You're gonna control so much of the game and the opponent's gonna feel really frustrated playing against you. That's more about the general play style. I'd say with the A50Bs, just try not to die. Try to get some of the Bs. You don't have a lot of secure inherently, so you sometimes can get pick up a kill and you know be annoying with Icicle Spear. You are waiting for that Ice Shard upgrade. You get a huge buff at level six. So level four plus six, these are your big buffs. Try to play around that. You also get quite a few other buffs later in the game. But look, for now, just shrink, okay? I got an early gank potential on this. This is the character I want you to think about. Being cerebral and doing an early gank is gonna give you high impact. Oh, we can actually add the real Glacier in here too as well. <laughs> Funny, okay, perfect. Right, now that we got number three, now for number two. Number two, okay, I really shouldn't tap on my desk like that. Number two is Zoroark. 
Now, this is it's a huge contingency. Now, I love putting Zorok as number one because I feel like it's the most skill-based jungler in the game. It allows a massive amount of control in how the game plays. It's Meow Skirado on drugs, but also, I don't know, like uh, there's times where Zoroark is so unimpactful, but both movesets of Zoroark are so strong. Zoroark is a fast, high tempo jungler, hits level five, does whatever it wants, takes complete control of the game. Level seven as well, good. Um, this is a Pokemon that if left unchecked, there's no CC in the enemy team, there's no real like threats and counters to it, it takes over and there's almost nothing you can do. You cannot defend your divers, uh, your backliners. You can't defend anyone from it, really. And if the Zorok is talented, it becomes even more difficult to deal with. You have illusion, you have all these other mechanics where Zora can really cancel out any impact you can do. We're talking about like, if a good Zora comes in, illusions, Blastoise, you move, we're wasting 3000 damage on the air. And that's really hard to deal with. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about Zorok's clear. Zorok once again has the option of the U, or the C clear, or the C from both ways, right? So you can either go this way, or you can go uh, reverse like that. You can do any type of clear with Zorok. You should be in the lane by 915 this again as well. I often recommend ganking top lane because usually they overextend, but bot lane ganks are very good in Zorok. Don't underestimate the impact you're gonna make by being able to sneak up into this bot lane and really surprise them with the idea that, oh, well, hey, look, my character does dash infinitely. You can't walk up on the pad and you actually have to retreat back here. Bot laners have to play in this zone because otherwise Zorok just runs up to them and murders them with the combo stash. Think about Zorok like that. Very aggressive, very fast paced, high impact. We, of course, we've explained the jungle clear a million times. This is the same simple. After you gank, I do want you to look for the invade. You're one of the strongest level five to seven junglers and you only get better at level seven. So why aren't you invading the enemy jungle? It is basically free real estate. Please invade the enemy jungler, make their lives misery. If they are not strong before level seven or like just, you know, actually invade him. If you have four, if four dudes come into the middle of the map and kill you, look at the end of the day, one, maybe we should be a bit, <laughs> a bit better in the map where in a sense and you know, learn to escape. But Zorok is one of these characters. You jump in here, right? And the enemy, let's just say, is poor Shifu. He's running around trying to escape. His teammates come. You just jump over this wall and they've wasted 10 seconds from the lanes coming to save him. And then everyone should get value. We're talking about like level seven lanes. Like level seven lanes, this is, it's just huge. It's disgusting. This is something you really badly want to leverage and you're gonna find a lot of value in actually taking advantage of this. So those are my tips for Zorok. And finally, what is the rank one jungler of the patch Sulu? I truly believe that right now this character feels like it's cheating without cheating. You have Mewtwo Wise clone, it's Dragapult. Dragapult takes the cake. Now, why Dragapult? Why is Dragapult so powerful and strong? Well, okay, it's quite simply put. Dragapult is a fast auto attacker with the best noob stumping ability in the game. Phantom Force literally was designed to stomp noobs. This is, uh, for League of Legends analogies and those of you who enjoy the game, this is Twitch from League of Legends. You get a kill and you get a reset on this invisibility ability, which gives you attack speed, which gives you damage. It's basically straight up giving you another item. Not to mention the Phantom Force was buffed and now gives you 100 AD after 10 kills. So to kill 10 people, every time you're killing someone, you're becoming stronger and faster. It's a snowball character that is out of this world. You have an ultimate that you never have to worry about. So you're spamming, you're constantly on top of the game and you're just so fast and incredibly impactful throughout the whole game. Dragapult level five. Okay, yeah, whatever. Not the greatest character of all time, but it is still strong enough to get some kills. And if you get someone stuck in these lane positions, as I said, okay, Dragapult clear, same thing. You can do both types of Cs. If you catch someone is here at this area in Dragapult, you're gonna kill them 100% of the time. They cannot escape to this pad before the red buff kills them. So just try to think about that. If you catch someone in the, before this like little uh, goalpost thing, they're dead. Just auto attack them to death. The only thing you need to worry about getting chains to seed. I would recommend taking flash. I see a lot of X attacks. If you really are ambitious and you think that you can be super disciplined, take that uh, X attack. But look, most of the time you're gonna to wanna to take the, the jack button. I think it's just too valuable to reposition because uh, anti-CC doesn't help. You're just gonna get one tapped anyway. You are a super fast leveling jungler. After this, don't even bother invading. Go to your clear again, level seven, even better. You get Shadow Ball, extra repositioning, extra damage. You are just a nightmare to deal with. If you reappear twice in a fight, you have so much more value than pretty much any jungler in the game. You are like Mewtwo Y 
and Mitsu Wai's little brother. Of course, nothing can be as strong as that character. That was actually ab absurd. But, you know, being anywhere near the, that power level is so insane. So I want you to think about this, this early leveling, you know, coming to the gank. Get kills. This is a snowball character. Don't just spend the whole game farming. Go find these angles. Go invisible. Go to look to surprised enemies. Pick on the squishies. Get your stacks. And then when you get your stacks, you're stronger. You're better. You're faster. Go and impact the game. You're going to do a lot of damage to the enemy team. All right. That about wraps it up. You've now received the top five junglers of the patch and the characters I think that can carry you the most in solo queue in season 15. Is this 15 or 16? I think it's 16. Whoops. But yes, <laughs> the characters can carry the most in season 16. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed this and want to watch more, I'm going to drop two videos on the screen. But either way, like and sub. Hope you have a wonderful cheery day and these Pokemon take you to the next level in Pokemon Unites.